Hello. So uh, we have a couple of people trickling in. So uh, uh, before we launch into the formal thing, I just want to let you know that I'm not a weatherman. But look at the picture. That was two years ago from our balcony looking out toward the lake. And everybody's concerned about uh, snow. The latest forecast is that only a light flurry. And yet, the temperature tomorrow, the high 22, the low 13. It says Green Lake here, not Green Bay. So, we're in for exciting times. Why don't we begin, as we always do, with an invocation by Pastor Leslie. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we come to you in the new light of morning this chilly January day, in the beginning of a new year. We are facing changes and challenges and even more opportunities for the great growth and substantial joy in the newness of the day you have gifted us. Today we go about the, our work and ministry of the Residence Council, and we invite you to be with us, to guide us, and to bring us new joy in life in your presence. We thank you for the many gifts you amaze us with each and every day. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you. I will call the meeting to order. And the first order of business is to approve the minutes. Meg sent me an email this morning saying she's not able to make it this morning. So uh, she has asked that uh, I pass along this word. Uh, there were no corrections in the uh, December minutes. So it is time to ask for a motion to approve. Do I hear a second? All in favor say aye. Well done. Next, our treasury report. Allison? All right, good morning. Um, The profits received from the C's candy sale was $2,012.80. A disbursement to the library for book purchase was $71.62. One $30 check from the 2022 Appreciation Fund was cashed after 12 months and I will, dis I will dispute this transaction with the bank. Our current balance in our resident council account is $4,160.86. Thank you. Now time to hear from our stone management. Welcome our CEO, Reggie Mullen. Carolyn is going to talk about the Employee Appreciation <laughs> Fund after all of this. We have a series of reports. Right. We didn't want to slow down the opportunity for y'all to come and talk. I'll try to talk with my Yeah. Head. I got Frank saying y'all. That's so awesome. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Hope you can hear me okay. Um, it's just always so great, especially on a day like this. Is that me? I'm so sorry. Um, to see everybody come out. Um, as you know, we, we have some COVID issues here. Uh, I'll have someone speak to that in just a second. Uh, but we're also hearing that a lot of other health-related communities and facilities are really struggling. The hospitals are kind of full. And um, I was over at one of our sister communities, Bayview, the other day. They have uh, COVID in their clinical areas. And so uh, it's just a good time to remind everybody to uh, go back to 
2021 or 22 or 23 and uh, and uh, wear your mask. That's a, the best, easiest way to try to stay safe. A couple things I didn't put in my notes I want to mention. Um, the first one is uh, Jill's not on the agenda today. I gave her the day off from, from the assembly. Uh, not been a lot of uh, activity in terms of new residents or apartments that sold, but uh, Jill's had a really good week, and uh, we are so excited about this new year and the, the, the level of sales and entrance fee collections that we are likely to see. Uh, and I just I just want to give her a little shout out um, because you, you'll hear a lot more next month's meeting. Um, but we, we have obviously still have a lot of construction going on. Gary and his group are doing an outstanding job. Um, we uh, still have the two on the seventh floor. Uh, we are working in a couple of other apartments just to do what we call a, a turn or a refresh, but we're doing major construction on seven, getting ready to start major construction on the 10th floor and major construction in Cove West. So uh, we'll try to keep you notified in advance, but I will tell you now, I so appreciate your patience and understanding. Uh, with progress comes noise. And so uh, thank you for that. The other thing I want to mention is, uh, and I was just reminded of this walking down the hall, um, we have an employee, uh, Jillian Spector. If you don't know Jillian, then you've never had a problem with your bill. Uh, but Jillian does all of our accounts receivable, manages all of our billing process, and she has been out for quite some time. Uh, and we are so glad, we're so glad to welcome her back last week when she came back. Uh, if you go down the hall toward the restrooms, her office is uh, just before the crossroads on the left. And, uh, you know, if you see her, give her a thumbs up and welcome her back. So we're just so glad that, that things are good in her world now. Okay, so... Um, one other aside, uh, uh, Jeff was planning to be here today, Jeff, our driver, um, uh, to talk about our new concierge driving program. We're all very excited about that, um, but we have elected to wait and roll that out in February, so he will be at this meeting in February, likely bringing along a, a nice PowerPoint presentation and, uh, and some handout material so everybody understands how that works. Uh, as a reminder, we, we grew our fleet and our staff in transportation in anticipation of offering Uber or Lyft type transportation for all of you. Jeff's worked out all the pricing. It will always be advantageous to you to use our services versus uh, some other paid service. Plus, you don't have to ride with a stranger in a car that you've never been in before. So it'll feel like the Hearthstone uh, and we're excited about being able to offer that. Um, Jeff let me know that a, a couple, maybe two or three of the floor chairs had invited him to come speak about this program. He is happy to do that. So if you're a floor chair here and you haven't already asked Jeff to come into your meeting, feel free to do so. He just kind of gives you the highlights of what the program will look like. We are still refining the actual, you know, the fine details, but excited about uh, being able to give you some information in advance as, as you'd like. Uh, of course, the big thing I, I need to address is we did do a little restructuring here uh, last week. Um, and, and I truly believe, and, and I think most team members, if you would ask them, uh, we believe that th these changes will ultimately help us to be able to, you know, continue to improve our efforts to serve you. And that's what it's all about for every one of us. We start with what's best for residents. Um, I know there's been a lot of questions about, you know, why. Uh, uh, and, and the actions that we took. Um, but obviously for confidentiality reasons related to employment, I really can't share any specifics related to uh, any of the changes that took place. And I wanna just encourage all of you, and, and I've said this before, you know, your perceptions, your perspective as you encounter an employee is you're only seeing how they interact with you, how they treat you, their willingness to do whatever they can to support you. Bear in mind there's often another side to that perspective, and that is from our employee side or the employment side. Um, you know, your perspective regarding any particular employee and, and, and their interactions with you just represents that one side, managers in particular, uh, spend a significant amount of their time 
leading, directing, managing other staff members. And you typically never see that. So I just want, I'm just suggesting to you that there's always more to that story. Um, so here's kind of an outline of the changes that took place. Um, first of all, uh, we, we have a, a, a new professional with us. She'll be up in a second to introduce herself. Um, but related to our clinical oversight, uh, we're very fortunate to have Stacy Masaros uh, to join the Hearthstone uh, as one of our lead member of our leadership team. Um, her title is Director of Health Services. Um, and she has oversight and full responsibility for all the clinical areas. So that's the health center. She also holds a nursing home administrator license that's required to operate skilled nursing. Uh, she's responsible for assisted living and for memory care. And just as a side note, uh, she walked into an outbreak. And that's just uh, the luck of the draw, it seems like. But um, anyway, uh, not not her first rodeo. And, uh, and she's been fantastic her first seven days, uh, today's her seventh day here. Um, Stacy's also will be responsible for the wellness center downstairs and our relationship with Dr. Troyer that now serves uh, a number of areas uh, as a physician. And then she's also responsible for our relationship with Consonus and Consonus does our therapy, both in the skilled areas and also the lower level. Uh, they also are responsible for our fitness programs like Age Strong, so she takes over those roles. Other areas have moved under my responsibility. Um, the first and probably most important to all of you is resident engagement. So uh, I, I can't tell you how excited I am uh, to have those five members, and that's Nancy, Kristen, um, Leanne, uh, sorry, Deanne, Louisa, and Eric. Uh, but they are now working more closely together than they ever have. And, th and that's just one of the most exciting things, I think, uh, for us as an organization. Um, that team does report directly to me. I'm not planning to change that anytime soon. Uh, so I met with them last week. We went to lunch together just to sort of make sure everybody was okay and that we weren't going to lose anyone. Uh, and they were all so excited. Uh, I think just to really be able to get together as a group and then to have someone they felt like that they can come to, get support, and, and understand the directions they need to take. Um, so because of that, then those five people uh, met off-site yesterday. They asked me if they could do this. I said, absolutely. They went, they met all day long, and they planned out this entire year, the major events, the things they want to have to offer to all of you, the things we want to accomplish as a group. And I've only just gotten a, an initial report of how that went, but it was all thumbs up. And I'm excited about you know encouraging them and supporting them to move forward. Um, that team, as it stands now, is responsible for all activities, all resident engagement from independent living, uh, memory care, assisted living, and of course in the health center. We haven't yet really dedicated anyone to any particular area because I've just been so impressed at how they just uh, they approach everything as a team. And so that, that I believe will be something all of you will feel and, and, and witness in the course of the days and weeks ahead. Uh, the other area that's now my responsibility is dining services. Um, Joe Barron, who's our uh, general manager for Sodexo that oversees all of our dining, he now reports directly to me. He and I met for the first time yesterday. I'm really excited about working with him and, and John and Morgan and Patty and lots of other people that support dining services. I think we have an excellent dining services program. I know there are a couple of outliers that would disagree with me, but I think generally speaking, we are just light years ahead of where we were more than a year ago. Um, so uh, let's see. Um, the other change that took place is our, our wonderful pastor, Leslie, now reports directly to me. So um, the, 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 other than Stacy taking all of the clinical areas, uh, responsibility for that, the other departments report directly to me. And, don't, and I know somebody somewhere is going to go, that's going to burn Reggie out. But I got to tell you, each one of those areas, dining, activities, and working with Pastor Leslie, those are fun areas. Those don't bring a burden to me in any way. I like doing that kind of stuff. So um, 
the last thing I'll say is, um, and Tim will come up and give you a few more details, uh, but um, I just want to sincerely apologize to anybody that was affected by uh, some, you know, what was reported to us as some thefts that took place in this building last week. Um, I, I know it was it was scary and impactful, uh, and and I'm sorry. We are sorry. <clears throat> we constantly look at how we can improve our security here, uh, and Tim will give a little more detail. But we continue to investigate what happened. If you have information to share, if you can recall, and he'll give you the date and approximate time, but if you remember seeing someone unusual, let us know. Uh, we try our best to keep the world outside of our doors that if they don't belong here in this building. We have cameras, we have door locks, we have keypads. We do everything we can to only allow appropriate individuals into the building. It's not Fort Knox. It, you, uh, the person that knows what they're doing or that does it for a living, so to speak, they can get in here. Your best and last line of defense is your apartment door. I cannot encourage you enough to keep that door closed when you're not in your apartment. I believe all the doors lock automatically. Don't worry about being locked out. The front desk is, has someone 24 hours a day. We can get you a key. We can get you into your apartment. But just make sure that door is, is closed and locked when you're away from your apartment. Again, that's just the best line of, of defense for all of you. That's all I have. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Stacy. I've asked her to share a little bit about her background. But uh, personally, as a professional, been in this business a long time. Um, we just could not ask for a, a more competent, educated, and, 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 and experienced individual uh, to take the lead on our health areas. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it, it's a great question, uh, and, and that's already happening. Um, uh, generally speaking, if you, she asked if you have a question of, of something going on related to resident engagement, like who do you call? And I think the answer is any one of the five people. If you see them in the hall, if you have an email address, they're all in touch town, you should be able to contact them. I'm happy to address a lot of that. Um, Hallie is my is my last line of defense, as most of you know. And um, so it's really easier to get to me if you if you go through her. If you don't know Hallie, Hallie is suffering in Hawaii right now with all the weather. Uh, yeah, she uh, and she will not be back until Wednesday of next week, but she's working. And many of you know that you, you send emails and she responds because um, she's traveling. It's really, I'll just tell this, it's really neat. She got an opportunity to go with her dad uh, and uh I think four of his friends, two couples uh, that, that Hallie knows, I think they are all educators and were all a part of the high school where she grew up and her dad taught. And so it, it was it was a different kind of opportunity, but I can tell she's really loving it because she's like, look, I'm going to sign off for now. I'm headed to the beach. It's like, <laughs> so anyway, but but yeah, I'm happy to try to address anything. If you, you see Hallie or, or get through to her, she she may do that. Uh, but to really answer your question is we have not designated like this person does this one thing or that thing. With one possible exception, it doesn't affect any of you unless you want to offer her um, suggestions. Uh, but Nancy uh, has has stepped up. Some would say she's been voluntold. Um, but she she's taking the lead in communicating with um, entertainers, okay, groups that'll come in. Uh, my, that, that's how my phone started blowing up. It was like people were calling to communicate with the former director of that area, and, and they've been sent to me, and that's great. And then I find somebody that can really help them and look at a calendar and understand. So I'm excited to have Nancy do that. Kristen continues to work uh, with speakers that come in. That's kind of been her thing. You know, Eric's primary purpose, not purpose, but his function has been related to driving and trips and those things. Uh, none of this is changing, but what I think will happen is each of these individuals will learn to expand cooperatively with their colleagues to make sure we're always covered. I know at the football game Monday night, we, we had, I think there was three or four of them down there. It's always great to see them working together. Their, their most significant concern over the course of time has been they were never organized as a group. And so it was easy for me. I'm like, let's go to lunch. So we all went, we met, we got to know each other. And then 
I didn't ask them to do this. They said, can we take a day and go work together as a team and plan for the year? And I'm like, oh, well, of course you can do that. So did you have another question? Okay, and I don't want to get into answering questions. There's a lot more information. So thank you all. So without further ado, uh, this is Stacy Massaros. We're so glad to have her here. I'd like to welcome her with applause. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. I want to um, thank Reggie for pulling me out of retirement. <laughs> we started having some conversations, and um, I really realized that being able to come to this community, to be able to provide some leadership support and direction for our clinical teams was really, really important. And I've had a chance to meet with most of the directors in different areas, and I just want to tell you, you guys are so blessed to have such wonderful directors and staff that are clearly here for one reason, and that's just to be able to take care of people. So I'm, I'm, I truly am impressed and blessed to be here as well. I know that my bio was sent out, so most of you have read it, but just a really quick overview. I started uh, 42 years ago as a nursing assistant in this field and have worked in many different uh, varieties of jobs. I've done most every job there is to do in the healthcare continuum, including being a regional director of a large uh, healthcare organization. So it brings perspective from the empathy of working as a nursing assistant to the empathy of Reggie's job. and. One thing that I know is that all of us that work in this field have a very hard job. And regardless of our title, there's never enough resources, there's never enough time. And having a leadership team come together that helps and supports each other to say, you know what, let's do it together, let's find a way. And finding a way to say yes and helping staff understand that we're here absolutely to help get the job done. So that being said, I want to just give you a couple other quick updates. Um, as Reggie said, we have COVID in our assisted living and memory care, and we continue to have positive cases come forward almost every day. But I can tell you that uh, working with Emmy in the health center, she's the director of nursing over there, and she's also our infection control professional that oversees the campus and puts in policies, procedures, and systems that that girl's got it dialed in. She is so good and so knowledgeable about what she's doing that huge relief for me because I can now focus on other areas knowing that she's got this. I also know that almost every community skilled nursing facility has COVID back in their building. And part of that is because this particular variant is so contagious. So I thank you for wearing masks uh, because that's what's going to keep you safe when we interact in, in larger groups or in um, cl close proximity um, with each other for more than, you know, 10-ish minutes. Um, anyway, so thank you for doing that. Emmy is going to have another report. We have a COVID committee uh, meeting today at 3.30 that we do every week. We'll get the updates. The positive about this particular situation is that the, um, the in infection rate and transmission here at the Hearthstone is very low compared to what's happening out there in the rest of the world, which says we're doing things right. So please you know, encourage people that might not want uh, to wear masks to understand safety for themselves and safety for others as well. <clears throat> we also have on campus on Friday, um, I don't know the name of the company, but Emmy does. There is a company coming in that will provide COVID um, booster shots. If anybody is interested, would you reach out to Reggie? At the and yeah, just so we can we can get in contact. I think that overall the community has been um, 
uh, vaccinated at a very high rate, which is great because not all communities have embraced that. There's a lot of hesitancy out there, especially with the newer vaccinations coming out. We as professionals do recommend it. So if you haven't had it and you want it, please reach out to Reggie and we'll make sure that that happens for you on Friday. Okay. The other thing that um, I've really been focusing on is recruiting. You know, healthcare is so challenging to recruit competent, high energy, wonderful professionals because there's just not enough of them to go around for all the healthcare needs. So each community, each hospital, each entity is really just vying and fighting for the same pool of staff. One of the things that I've spent the last few years doing in this local community is a significant amount of recruiting. And I wanna let you know that we have had a really good recruiting week since I've been here. We've hired a community nurse director that starts on Wednesday, her name is Danielle. So she will be overseeing the wellness clinic, the assisted living and memory care units. So she'll be partnering with me as the director of, of those healthcare operations. We've also hired three um, uh, registered nurses for the health center as our goal is to you know, eliminate the, the temporary agency staff. So we've hired a full-time night, a full-time day, a part-time night, and we've got several other um, interviews scheduled to set up. So I'm working very closely with human resources to really respond quickly and get people in the door and show them what a wonderful place this is. And having sort of picked up the pace on how we do that recruiting, we've been able to have a very successful week. So we're gonna continue to do that as part of one of my priority focuses because providing care in the best way possible is gonna come from our staff versus from an outside agency. So just so you know where, where my head is, what I'm thinking about and how we pull all of these pieces um, together is really really what I'm, I'm here to do. And I'm here to help and that's what Reggie and I have partnered together is I have a really strong background in regulatory requirements for any healthcare settings. And so part of me coming here is some fresh eyes. Tim and I spent um, a really nice morning the other day kind of walking through operations and having me ask questions and, and clarifying things just to make sure that we do everything as safe as possible from the safety perspective as well. So that's my story, I'm here to help. And um, I am kind of all over the building. You probably see me running around all, the, all, all over the place, but I'm, at least for right now, I'm officing downstairs, but you know, Grace can always find me. So thank you so much. And again, I appreciate the warm welcome. Thank you. I just want to follow up on something she said. Um, I wasn't aware that we have a company coming in to do COVID vaccination boosters, um, but I'll get that information from Emmy and we'll, if, if it's available, if it's available to IL residents, we'll let you know. As most of you know, we plan for days in advance for those type of events. Okay, okay, right, so I'm just watching my cues from the back. So as soon as we have more information, we'll get it out to you via email, Touchdown, and I said the magic word. The email here, so we, we, I believe, have been doing a much better job of communication. Those of you that have email, we send you everything via email. We sent out something last week. It was this announcement about the changes in some personnel, and many of you did not get it initially, and some of you didn't get it even ever. So we narrowed it down to the fact that if you have a Comcast email address, so if your email address ends with at Comcast.net, something was happening that was being screened. We are working on that. I know Stephen has spent some time trying to figure out what is happening. Um, so if you don't get something, uh, all I can do is say, be patient, it might come in later. Uh, but that particular announcement, it became clear that not everybody was getting that. So we went old school, we made 200 copies and we put them in everybody's boxes. So I will likely do the same thing if we find out that there is an opportunity for COVID uh, booster for all of you, uh, for all of IL residents. I got a feeling they're coming to probably do boosters inside of the remaining uh, 
the residents that are testing negative now in assisted living and in the health center. That's our first priority, right? But keep your mask on when you're out in public or when you're in groups. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there you are. I've been scanning. Tim. Tim Alton. Talk about a lot of different things, including whatever you want. <laughs> whatever he wants. Okay. Testing, one, two, three. <laughs> okay. First, Happy New Year. Um, a new year, and I get a little reflective every time there's a new year. Uh, I check to see where I'm at in my own personal life. But more importantly, where I'm at work-wise, uh, I was walking in the door approximately one year ago. Okay. It's been a year. It's been a beautiful, um, fabulous year. So this time last year, uh, the coves were having difficulty with uh, their uh, heat. In fact, they had no heat in their building for probably a couple of months during the dead of winter. Okay, uh, we had an elevator that was had been down uh, for quite some time, and we were having trouble with some of the others. So just those two things alone have given me hope <laughs> that we're moving in a really good direction and stuff like that. So when I'll, I'll just keep going. Uh, when Stacy says we had a little talk and walk yesterday, that meant we were together for two and a half hours. So we had a very in-depth conversation and then we did grounding of the building, uh, which was really helpful for me to see it from somebody else's perspective, because uh, you see things a little differently that way, in a good way. So a couple updates. Uh, Reggie talked about the security issue we had. Uh, it was on the 4th. Uh, a Thursday, and it came to us from a resident who basically let us know that somebody had been in her apartment, they'd stolen some things. And after that, it just kind of blew up where we're finding other individuals were impacted. Um, I met with uh, two of the residents Tuesday to kind of get a little more feel for what was occurring. Um, and then we started looking at things like our cameras. We were looking at individuals, because we have to look at ourselves too, uh, who was working, who was not working, um, uh, access points, uh, how could somebody have gotten in unnoticed, all that kind of stuff. So with it impacting, um, we believe, four floors, uh, the ninth, the seventh, the fourth, um, and the fifth, thank you. Uh, started seeing a pattern uh, because it was all happening pretty much in the same uh, wing and in the same kind of general area. So we kind of feel that they came up through the stairwell on that far end. <coughs> and by chance on that far end of the stairwell on Sunday, unbeknownst to me, one of our housekeepers found um, quite a few of the items that were stolen, things like cards and IDs and things like that. So those were returned. However, the petty cash was not returned. Uh, so we're still, <laughs> yeah, the cash is gone. Uh, so we're still looking at it deeply because we want to make sure that if it's somebody from inside, we're dealing with it very quickly. If it's somebody from outside, we got to figure out a better way to contain that from coming in. So that's going to be an ongoing, very fluid process over the next couple weeks. Um, next piece, it, I don't want to ask questions, do I? Okay, thank you. Um, I'll, I'll dive into um, life safety. Um, last uh, Friday, we did our quarterly sprinkler testing for this building, and it passed top to bottom, flying colors. That's a good thing uh, because some of our equipment is pretty old, like me. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Cove East, and I'll get an announcement out uh, after this meeting. Cove East, we're doing the annual fire alarm testing, which basically means you're going to heal bells and whistles uh, at different points throughout the day. If a technician needs to get into a resident room, one of my team will be shadowing that person, okay? Um, and then next Friday on the 19th, we're doing what's called a smoke controlled system test for this building. And that's one I've, I personally have never done before. So it's gonna be a learning process for me. Uh, they basically are gonna be looking at this building as a high rise building and they're gonna be testing different systems throughout the building from top to bottom. So 
They may go up on the eighth floor, and on that floor, they're going to throw it into a full-blown alarm. Then they may go up to the ninth floor and do a pull station. Uh, then they may go down to the fifth floor, and they may do a tamper switch on one of the sprinkler control valves. So it's kind of like a hit and miss all over the place just to see what's working and what's not working, what's broke, uh, things like that. Um, and I'm excited to see that. That's a good one. Sidewalk project. Oh, boy. What was the last, communica last communication was uh, permit was in process. The city moves very, very slow sometimes, okay? So the latest update is actually very good. We do have the permit. Uh, permit is in hand. We also have a potential production day, which means the day they will be doing the work. And they're scheduled, or at least the permit has them scheduled, for the 29th of this month to the 31st knowing they're only going to probably take one day to do the work, but that's their window is that 29th to 31st, and they'll re be repairing that really bad section down here on 1st Avenue. So we finally get movement on this. Um, hopefully uh, next year I could, or this year now, I could start working on some of the other problematic areas around the community. Who has used Touchdown for work orders? Anybody in this room? Wow, look at that. Wow, that's amazing. Did you notice any difference this week? That's a good thing, because we, we, we changed work order systems. Uh, and the goal was for it to have zero impact to what we do in Touchdown. So Hallie's not here, but she was instrumental in pushing that through and ensuring that everything you currently do in Touchdown for work order processes wouldn't change, it wouldn't look di too different, things like that. And very successful. The new program is called TELS, and it's, its biggest advantage is a couple of things. First, it's, it's cheaper. And, and less money is good, uh, especially if it can still do all the things the other did and more. So less cost, more results. Uh, the biggest area that I, I'm impressed with is its ability to uh, help us with life safety types issues. Um, to help us with preventive maintenance type issues and things like that. So I'm looking forward to it over the next year. I've worked with it before, so it's not foreign to me. Um, I'm just happy that nobody noticed. So that's that's a win. Go ahead. We, it's called TELS, T-E-L-S. <laughs> okay. It's actually through um, a part of Direct Supply, which is a healthcare provider of equipment and supplies and stuff like that. One of the reasons I really like it is from an asset management standpoint, if anybody in this community, um, staffing-wise, orders anything from t uh, direct supply, it's immediately asset tagged and is part of the PM system. So we don't have to do anything. It just appears kind of thing. So that's helpful for me. I think that was it. Life safety sidewalks, high rise tells and I was going to talk about the weather um, also knowing that this morning at 5 30 this morning was the warmest part of the day and it's going to get colder from all the way through the weekend they don't expect things to get to the 40 degree mark until next Wednesday so it's going to be all over the board in the 20s and 30s and stuff like that um, be very careful as you're navigating between buildings uh, we're going to be very diligent and try and keep up with if there's any ice issues. Uh, we have people here 24 seven, so we're not worried about getting the snow melt out there. But you're my eyes and ears also, if you see something, say something to me. Um, and watch out for your neighbors, okay? Make sure they're okay. If you're, you have issues with your heat, please let me know immediately so that we can get on it immediately. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tim. Two things that I want to follow up on real quickly. There have been some suggestions about, I'm, I'm really pleased about the evolution of Touchtown getting better and better. And one of the things Jim asked me earlier, we have talked in the past about having a folder in there that it would allow uh, residents to say, you know, have an extra whatever. Would anyone like that? Or to just, just kind of like a, uh, a uh, swap shop sort of thing that, well, that, that's a technically difficult thing to do. Efforts are being done. 
And then, Tim, just before you go out the door, a special salute. For those of you who uh, don't walk between here and the coves and don't necessarily go out after dark, there was a question about there's not enough light on, on first, and there was a big, huge light that's kind of blinding. <laughs> go out there some evening and walk up the hill. It's lit all the way up with little uh, icicle lights. Excellent job. Thank you very much. Round of applause. Thank you, Reggie and everyone. We appreciate uh, all your efforts. So um, I don't know what I'm supposed to do because I can't see the agenda. <laughs> OK. Um, we have some business things to do. The first is to hear from Carolyn about the Employee Appreciation Fund. Thank you. It's great to see all of you here. Uh, this monthly meeting is a very important meeting for our community. So much good and new information is dispersed, and I think it helps us also to congeal as a community. So it's good to see you here, and especially newcomers. Um, everyone is welcome. This is usually a low-key time of the year in terms of the Appreciation Fund because we've had such a big push toward the end of the year, right before Christmas, for which uh, we're all still grateful. Um, it's low-key, but I just want to let uh, everyone know, and particularly newcomers, that these yellow sheets are still downstairs in the Resource Center right by the transportation sign-up. Um, you could pick one up, and everything you need to know about to how to get on board for giving to the Appreciation Fund is there. Um, you can sign up to give monthly. You put your information in. That goes to accounting, uh, so they'll, they know what to do. You can give a cash donation, and I think one place where we fall short is thinking you can only do that once a year, right at the big push. You can give a cash donation throughout the year. Uh, twice, three, whatever suits your, um, your financial situation, whatever suits you best, you can do that. So there are more of those forms down there. Um, I have had this job as chair of this fund. I've enjoyed it very much. I've done it for two years. I will be m moving on at the, um, when we have um, nominations and we have a new slate of officers. But obviously, I've done a lot of thinking about what, what is this job about? And I would say the number one criterion is how to inspire people to give generously. That's why I've tried to come up with vignettes based on what our hourly help does for us to help us to appreciate, to feel the gratitude for all those hourly workers who serve us. What I'd like to leave you with today is this thought. What do you do to inspire yourself to give generously? Whether it's to this or any other charitable giving, I'd appreciate knowing what that is. Don't call me on my phone, but send me an email. And you all have this directory. My email address is in there. And I would just like to know what you would do to what you do do to inspire yourself to give generously. Thank you. All right. Now let's hear from Penny Vogel about the uh, dining committee. And Penny, if you'd come up here so you get captured on the camera, that'd be great. Here's a quick review of the uh, right directly here here's a quick review of the dining committee uh, meeting that we had this month the happy kiosk rate for December was 84 percent up six percent from this from November um, the virtual kitchen tour editing was put on hold to accommodate the holiday events and will resume soon so we're all looking forward to seeing that. Um, a couple of fishy things. Chef 
Morgan mentioned that steelhead and um, sturgeon will be hard to uh, obtain this month due to low stocks. Um, and a question came up regarding whether the uh, fresh fish that is served meets Monterey Bay guidelines. And Morgan explained that Sodexo's provider now is Pacific Seafood, and it a actually has higher guidelines than the Monterey Bay guidelines. So that's good news. Okay. Um, Sodexo is now partnering with the Ballard Food Bank for good but unusable items. For example, if there's a dented can, but the date is good, we can't use that, but the, the, the food market can. So, and there are several other things that are not expired, that they have oversupply of, it will go to the food bank. So that's really a good thing, I think. <laughs> and um, thanks to a suggestion by Meg Ledlam, the dad, Dining committee minutes will soon be posted on Touchtown, and this is in addition to the representatives sharing the information with everybody. The timing is to be determined given the transition of positions and Hallie's vacation. Thank you. Thank you. So next up would be on the agenda, uh, is uh, Laurel Johnson talking about the newsletter committee. Well, she sent me a message this morning as well saying she can't make it. So uh, the update is that the committee has been formed and the members are Laurel Johnson, Meg Ludlam, Gary Ness, Voicelin Jackson, Keith Arntz, Eleanor Kreistad, and Sharon Doyle. And they will be meeting tomorrow uh, for their first meeting to figure out what the steps are. They've already designed a really good survey that uh, hopefully will come to everyone relatively soon. And when it does, please take time to fill it out because it's very, very important. All right? And then there's another committee that's underway that's quite important, and that is called the Dining Room Entry Furniture Committee, led by our Vice President, Georgia. Title couldn't get any larger, longer. I'm pleased to announce that the furniture proposal is complete and uh, has a video from Frank that will help us when we meet with the six executive administration members this next Monday, where we will ask for approval of this furniture proposal. So next time we'll have some full news. All right, thank you. Don, do you want to come to the front of the room and do a movie committee report? He's trying to show off by moving very brightly. You didn't see him, he was running across the back there. Here you are. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I don't have a movie to show, at least not right now. Um, we're in the middle of a month of, of showing movies two nights a week. On Saturdays, we're showing um, movies honoring Meryl Streep. And on Tuesday night, we're showing musicals. And... Um, that's all of that has been posted, so I won't go into uh, detail about what they are. I will say that uh, since we no longer have a movie page in the Spark, because we no longer have the Spark, um, I just wanted to review where you can find out about movies. Uh, one is on Touchtown, uh, under the community calendar, all of the movies are listed there. Um, also, um, we still put uh, a whole list of the movies. Uh, uh, Kristen Kent does a wonderful job of uh, designing posters that show all of the movies that are in the elevators. And you can always come down here and outside the door. The next uh, movie that is going to be uh, shown here in the, in the chapel 
uh, will be out there. And if we have a newsletter at some point to replace the Spark, we'll put it in there as well. So there are, there are lots of ways that you can find out. Um, let me turn to next month. The movie committee met uh, uh, yesterday uh, and as always had a very spirited uh, meeting. And we chose, uh, first of all, to limit the, uh, the movies that we are going to show as a regular theme to Saturday night in February. And the theme for February, uh, kind of thinking towards Oscar season, is movies about making movies, okay? And there are four of them that were uh, chosen. First, The Artist. Uh, you might remember that movie from just a few years ago. Uh, the Stunt Man. That is an older movie and uh, a very interesting mystery almost. Then uh, Hail Caesar, which is a Coen Brothers movie. Uh, that's always a riot. And finally, I think the ultimate in movies about uh, making movies, Singing in the Rain. I need to bring that back about, you know, every week or so. I love that movie. Okay, so the other thing, th the reason that we are using only Saturday nights is on March 10th, Sunday, put it on your calendar now, uh, that is Oscar night. And uh, we haven't talked with resident engagement formally about this, but we will have uh, a, a gala for that night uh, in the lower level. Uh, bring out your formal wear now. Uh, pictures will be taken. Food will be eaten. And uh, Oscars will be given out on that night. It's always a wonderful night. Um, the other thing about February is uh, we, ha we have been told that um, a movie that is directly relevant to all of us will be available on a streaming service probably by the end of this month. And so we're going to set up screenings for those of you who haven't seen it, Boys in the Boat. Um, yeah. The ultimate feel-good movie for us. You know, UW people, they need some feel-good movies right yeah. now. This is the ultimate one. So I think that is all that I have to say. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. So, Denise is over to your right. Done. Never mind. Oh. Denise, we're doing quick, quick uh, check in. Covies. Denise? Do you want me to read this? Sure. I'm on here. Okay. Um, not too much news. We have no vacancies, which is wonderful. Uh, and we did have our football watch party. Thanks, John, for the, where are he's not here, uh, cookies and fruit for our dessert. And I guess that's about it. We haven't got any plans for February yet. Great. Thank you. Elaine? Good morning. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Cove West has been party central. Uh, in December, we had our holiday ugly Christmas sweater eggnog party. And, uh, January uh, 1st, we had a Sugar Bowl watch party, go dogs. And then on the 8th, a week later, we also had a playoff party, which ended, unfortunately, a little sadly. Um, we have coming up at some point a uh, white elephant gift exchange, the uh, date to be determined. Thank you. Okay, thank you. 10th floor, Sheila. Thank you. Um, so uh, 10th floors has those two. It's nice to know that they're going to start working on the two units at the end of the hall for us. Um, we've had, uh, unfortunately, about four falls over 
illness related issues on our floor. So we have one in the health center, one in the hospital, um, and a couple of people are, have medical regimens they're on. So, uh, and because we don't have that many people anyway, because <laughs> we have the party room and the guest suite, um, where we managed to get all our floor decorations up and had a good time doing that. So, uh, but I just would add one thing. Uh, if you get a chance, come up to the 10th floor and see uh, the elevator display because courtesy of Georgia, we have a friend sitting there and um, it's worth a look and there's more to be, more to come, I understand, so. Thank you. Jean from the ninth floor. Thank you. Um, we have we have Jeff coming next Monday to our floor meeting, so we can ask him all those questions that we're dying to ask about the concierge service. And um, we also, when you're on the tenth floor, looking at that elevator display, we'll hope you'll stop on your way down at the ninth floor and look at ours. It's a beautiful all-white display done by Di Diana Marshall um, that she does a lot of paper cutouts that are just beautiful. So if you have a chance, come down and uh, take a look at that. That's it. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Liz? Liz Wagner? Eighth floor. And on your way down from 10th floor to 9th floor to 8th floor, on the wing that I would call maybe the west wing, um, we have three empty units, and so we had a lot of empty walls. So we currently have some new photographs by a professional photographer. And um, it, when you're walking on these beautiful days inside, come by and see. 